Good morning everyone and welcome to our free YouTube video of the day. From Monday to Friday, 8 a.m., I usually have a video for you, trying to help the best I can on um, a big day, US Elections Day. And um, uh, let's see if we finally have a resolution uh, and uh, if we are going, if US uh, are going to have a new president or not. If um, and if we we have a more clear view on um, uh, where we are going from here, so anything can happen on U.S. elections. I'm not going, and no one can really predict first what will be the outcome if um, it's Mr. Trump, if it's Mr. Biden, or if it's no one. Um, uh, at least until until January. So no one really has the, a clue what the hell is going to happen. Uh, I'm not going to predict that. Uh, I'm going to try to uh, see the action on price where we are right now and where we can go from here. So uh, starting this morning, the markets are pretty much on the green. So after last week pullback, um, overall picture after the Europe falling apart last week on COVID cases raising, uh, we started the week with yesterday big move up on the Europe and also uh, US markets and this morning we are giving a follow through for the upside. Uh, so from there bull case scenario at least on the last two days um, on action but uh, let's look into the the charts and see where we stand right now and um, where we can go from here so starting with the sp500 sp500 futures up more than 1.4 percent this morning and uh, where we are and um, are we on a bull or a, on a bear camp scenario so what what we have here we had um on uh, october we had a very big fading uh, since uh, we retested the breakdown so on september we had an ugly breakdown here uh, on the sp500 bringing a big correction on september and uh, we recovered we recovered this moving average that i have here and uh, from there we resume back up and we had a retest on the breakdown level so once a support is broken it becomes a resistance so we retest that it was on a monday if you remember that was uh, it was a, a monday before for example apple event before the apple uh, event on tuesday so it was on a, a a monday with a big gap and go squeezing the shorts ringing a lot of the stocks and forcing a lot of shorts to cover uh, retesting the break um, uh, down area and faded after that. So on the first touch, the uh, resistance holds. Okay. So uh, and from there, we had lots of uh, um, uh, selling. We saw also um, tech names fading after earnings. We saw um, lots of volatility, lots of uncertainty. The second wave uh, of COVID on Europe affecting the overall market. And we saw price fading below the 21 and 50 day moving average. But right now, what we see to start the week on Friday, we put a low and yesterday we made a higher low on US, uh, on um, SP500, a higher low versus Friday and also versus September. So what we know right now, we know that we have a higher low versus September. We also know that we recover the moving average and right now we are above the moving average that we recovered on September. Now what? If you pay attention, one of the important things that we saw on September to, to recover the bull case scenario, it's to recover price, to recover as fast as possible the short term moving average. So we need for the SP500 bull case scenario, we need above 33.72. 33.73 that will put pressure for uh, resume back into 3400 but we need to see it and um, there is something completely different from now to uh, September uh, it's uh, US elections so tonight we are going to to have US elections and um, a lot of things can happen um, uh, after elections so if you remember four years ago uh, on the last elections we saw markets breaking down big fading big sell off after uh, the elections just to recover it all back 
uh, before the market opened was almost on the, the, the green, uh, was slightly on the red and after the market opened it gone from red to green and it rocket after that and the market resumed higher in the, the, the following months. So anything can happen, okay? Uh, so I'm going cash overnight uh, on the... Uh, on the short term, I'm going cash. Um, I can hold and I'm holding some shares on the long term, but it's for the long term. On the short term, um, short term account uh, completely on cash overnight, it will be my position. Actually, I've been on cash on options. I've been on cash. My short term account is on options and um, uh, I'm, I'm on cash for several weeks. Uh, because the risk, in my opinion, is high, the volatility is still too much elevated at um, uh, 35, the VIX at 35, it's insanely high, so smooth selling needs VIX below 20, and uh, right now very, very elevated, uh, and that's a yellow flag for me to hold positions overnight, because it can we can have big gap ups and big gap downs. So here, for now, we have higher lows versus September, we are recovering, we recovered the same moving average that um, uh, put price and bring market higher into October. Now what? We need, as we saw here, we need to recover the short term moving average, the 8 and 21. While we are below the 8 and 21, the moving average, we are vulnerable on the short term. Okay, active traders. Short-term traders needs the price for the bull case above the 8 and 21, the moving average. Otherwise, what can happen if price not able to go above 33.73? We can go back and fade, and from there we have uh, uh, Friday lows. Friday lows will be the key, in my opinion. And below that we have September lows, 3190, uh, 31.98 and 31.94.95. It's 200 day moving average. That will be the support. If it breaks below that, watch out. Stay aside, okay? Because big short, big correction going to the end of the year, but. We need to see it. Not only the US elections tonight, but on on Thursday, don't forget that we are going to hear from Fed. So we have the Fed statement, 2 p.m. That can be a game changer. We need to hear from the Fed. Are they going to keep pumping the market and bring liquidity and pushing the market up? Then we can resume back, back up. Or are they going to do something and tell something as they did two years ago and the market roll over into the two years ago into 2018 and roll over into the end of the year. What the hell is going to happen? I don't like to flip coins. I prefer to wait to hear from US elections and from the Fed to see where we are going from here. One of the yellow flags right now, it's Nasdaq. Okay, Nasdaq, we, we have been seeing Nasdaq has been the big bull. And right now it's um, basically on no man land. It, it has been fading every, uh, uh, we saw Apple going down after earnings. So let's put here the, the, the price from the event, from the event uh, on new iPhone. Apple has been fading also after earnings been fading. Price is below the 821 day moving average. If we uh, uh, remove price, we have a bear cross here. Look from the bear cross. Look what happened to the price going all the way into 107. And the bear cross was here, okay, two weeks ago. And um, uh, we saw price fading into 107. Now what? We are holding a big important support level. What is that level? It's 107. It's right at my moving average. So bear case scenario is below 107. Below 107, we have 103. We have $100.8 uh, the support before entering the gap. And we have a gap to fill 96.3. We also have 200 day moving average 95. But we need a move below 107. Below 107, crash down. Uh, for the bull case, we need above 114115. That will put price above all the key moving average and uh, we'll be looking to try to take out last week highs at 117.3. Right now, where we are, no man land. So keep it uh, as simple as possible. We saw uh, uh, Apple fading. We saw Netflix fading after earnings. But last week, we saw big pop, big drop, uh, big pop on um, Thursday, big downside on Friday. So action, action is uh, all over the place. Uh, Facebook uh, yesterday saw some bullish options activity on the name, but didn't find the traction here to resume back up. Uh, so uh, uh, shorts 
keeping the ball and the uh, uh, Keeping price below the 8 and 21 in moving average, bull case scenario needs above 271 to resume back into 280 to 85. Bear case scenario needs below 255 to go into 244, 245. It's my next big level ahead. So lots of uncertainty here. Uh, one of the things um, uh, that's keeping the bull case here pretty much intact, um, at least on the short term, is Dow Jones that is trying to recover and pushing price uh, also back above the 8 and 21 the moving average. Didn't happen yet, but we had a nice reversal, one, two, three days, nice reversal bounce up. But we need not out of the woods, we need above 27,500 to go back into 28k. So right now, uh, we are in the middle of nowhere. Big indecision, big uncertainty on the market, and uh, I'm sharing with you what uh, I'm going to do. I'm going to stay uh, uh, on options, okay? I'm going to stay cash overnight, no position. I have some long shares here. For the long term, I will have patience, time, and um, uh, it's the long term uh, portfolio approach. Uh, on the short term, on options, I'm going to stay cash overnight because. Tomorrow we can have a big gap up, we can have a big gap down, or we can stay flat. And if we stay flat, volatility is still too much elevated and the options premium will get killed either for upside or either for downside. I don't want to lose money, I don't want to flip coins. So for me, um, it's it's a, a very tricky. The odds are not in the favor, in my opinion, to hold positions overnight. I'm seeing lots of edges, okay, for possible downside of the market, okay. For example, on SQQ, that's um, uh, uh, an ETF that goes up when uh, Nasdaq and QQQ break down, and I'm seeing lots of edges, okay, lots of calls into this and next week, this week and next week, lots of calls. They are protecting themselves but that's edges on the short term because we continue to see and i continue to see going into 2021 lots of bullish options activity but on the short term there is uncertainty on the market so they are edging are they those edges going to play out no one has a clue okay uh, so uh, stay open minded uh, if you have some longs you can hedge same thing with um, uh, the other investors that are doing edging with sqq calls um, you can lose only the premium that you invested for um, if you want to wedge your long-term portfolio, if you are short, in my opinion, you should have started covering the shorts yesterday when we saw the big green open, not giving follow-through for downside uh, from last week. Uh, you should have started covering the, 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 the shorts yesterday. Today, more pain ahead for the shorts uh, if um, uh, they keep holding the positions. So right now, last week we saw a big selling pressure for the downside today we are on day two on the the the, the bounce up uh, on the market so very tricky play wisely protect your cash i believe that after this week after u.s elections after the fed we will have a more clear view and we will have more opportunities going forward so right now the rule protect cash to be ready and to have the uh, the necessary um cash to jump in when the market it favors either up or down i don't care okay uh, because if we going down and if we break for example on um, sp500 or uh, on spy if we break below 319 we have lots of gaps to fill down okay so we have lots of gaps to fill below 290 dollars on spy for example okay and we can have a big downfall so uh, I don't care, okay? Either market goes up or down. Uh, but we need to get out of this of this range. Uh, very painful one, very tricky. Uh, so right now, patience, protect your cash. The uh, the the uh, until the market resolves one way or the other. So um, thank you all for watching. It has been great to uh, do these videos every single day. So if you like this video, please give me a like on the video. Leave your comments below. And also don't forget to subscribe to the uh, channel so you can get the next video for free, 8 a.m. from Monday to Friday. Thanks for watching. Wish all a good trading. Stay safe and be happy trading. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. See you.